There's still power. There's still wonder working power. 
your Lord. I, do, I demand that you listen to what's going on around because I am in charge. I love you. I need you worshiping me. You need to plead the blood every day over you, over the world because without the mighty power of my blood, nothing can you need to put on the full armor of God so you can be able to fight the enemy and defeat it and praise the victory that is coming to you today. Amen. I say, wake up, be aware, because I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming. Yeah. And, and be ready, for I am the great I am.
Can you hear the chains falling, church? Can you hear the chains rattling and falling to the ground? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah!
of the Lord in this place. Just give him honor and glory. My God. My God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I, I, I. Oh, shut up. God's not done here yet. Don't quit. Don't quit, honey. Don't give up, honey. Jesus, right now, Father. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Shut up. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus, right now. Yes, Lord. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Power flowing for you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Glory to God Almighty, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. spoke to us and told us through his spirit that the enemy had come in against us and come in against us and come in against us, but the Lord was about to raise up his spirit and pour out upon us. And every enemy would be scattered in the name of Jesus. And I don't know who needs that this morning. But what are the enemy intended for the bad and the wrong and the evil? God is about to turn it around for your good. Amen. God is about to confuse your enemies. The Lord's already spoken here this morning. He's going to confuse your enemies. He's going to confuse your enemies. Amen. And blessings is going to flow into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen
Let's take a few moments, receive our tithes and our offering this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Bobby and let's see. Brother Tom, can you grab the other one, please, sir? Brother. Thank you, Jesus. We want to thank you for all your giving. Without you, it would be impossible to do the things that we do. Amen. And I pray each and every day that God blesses you. As the Bible says, when you bring the tithes and offering into the storehouse, he'll pour you out a blessing you cannot contain. Go ahead and pray with offering, Brother Bobby. Thank you, Father. Thank you, I do need to announce real quick for all our members uh, next Sunday. I need to call a business meeting. Uh, I should have already done this, but uh, uh, yes, in Jesus' name. Uh, but please, all the members after church next Sunday, shouldn't take too long. Please join us for this business meeting. Amen. God is just kind of let you know God has been doing so much this last week and blessing us. Uh, we uh, were finally able to get all the rock moved from where the mobile home was yesterday. I uh, got some new dirt laid out. I'll uh, let you pick it up off the floor. And uh, we got the sidewalk removed that didn't go nowhere. Uh, and uh, hopefully this week uh, we're planning uh, as far as everything goes the way it should. Uh, the smaller of the two sheds will be gone. Amen. But we're we're just cleaning up the property, trying to make it look nice, and uh, trying to fulfill a vision that God has put in our hearts and our spirits. Amen. And uh, God's God's on the move, and uh, He's on the move. He's He's running faster than I think I can run. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Al to come and uh, miss the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. And just continue worshiping the Lord. Amen. We love you. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Yes, we can. The Lord will have his way. Amen. Yes, he will. Through the anointing, the Lord will have his way. Yes, he will. Amen. If you yield to the anointing. Amen. Too many, too many times we fight the anointing. Amen. I was caught off guard yesterday. I'm going to tell you about it here in just a second. It's really interesting to me on being a Christian and what gets thrown at you. But first, let's pray. Father God, in the name yes, of Jesus, Lord. we praise your name and bless your name. And thank you, Father, for being here this morning in such an awesome way. People's hearts and minds and bodies and spirit have been touched. They have been. They'll, the Bible says they'll never be the same. So why do we change, Lord? Why do we change and forget what happened to us when you were moved in our situation? Why is that? And I pray against that right now in the name of Amen. Jesus, Lord. That what has happened to us today, that we take it with us. Take it to our workplaces. Take it home with us. So, God, that we can live that more abundant life that yes. you call us to live. And, God, I pray that your anointing will work right now through me. And, God, that people would be blessed. And I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> so, yesterday morning, I went into work. It was about quarter to seven. We work at seven o'clock. And uh, an individual, it's very interesting. I went to high school with this, this individual. Hadn't seen him since I was 18, and he was 16. So I keep calling him an underclassman. It's a lot of fun. But anyway, his name is Jim Smadak. I don't mind saying his name because he's an awesome man. He really is. But I knew him in high school. And he's been working with us now for a couple of months. Uh, but I hadn't seen him since I was like 18. But anyway, he knows what I believe. It doesn't take long if you're around me to know what I believe. All of you should be that way. It shouldn't take people long to know what you believe. Amen. You don't have to go and grab, and grab somebody around the throat and say, I'm this, I'm that. That's right. But the words that you say are so important. People should be able to see Jesus in you. That's right. Come that on. reflection should happen right away. But anyway, he comes up to me and he says, I want you to go to this website. He said, I want you to bring up this thing uh, by Chuck Swindoll. <coughs> and I said, I know who Chuck Swindoll is. I used to listen to him in the early 90s. And so I went to it, and there's, there was a, a writing that he had put in there on attitude. Okay? He said, I want you to read this to the whole meeting this morning. I said, okay. I'd be glad to. I like doing things. It's just an opportunity for God. That's how I see. I never get nervous with stuff like that. I really don't. See, if you're if you're working with the things of God, you're not going to get nervous. I'm sorry. You may get a little apprehensive because of yourself, and if that happens, then you need to fight that because that's just fear. Okay, I'm not even a little bit afraid to be up here. I don't care how many people are listening. You know why I'm not afraid? Because I know what I know. I'm not cocky. I have confidence. I believe what I'm saying. If you don't believe what you're saying, you're going to be in fear. Because you're going to be trying to push off an agenda that you really don't believe in, and that's not going to work. Those people are going to see that. So anyway, I took it and I read it. And I read it. And I read it like I read. Attitude. And in that, in that um, whatever, you know, it was just a saying, what he was talking about is attitude affects people's jobs their families, their churches, it's all in there. And I read that to 20 people, whatever it was, how many people were in the room. And these are young people, almost every one of them unsaved. Okay? And when it was over, the last thing I, I added my own thing in, you know how that goes. <laughs> At the end of that, I said that about attitude, that right at the end I said, It is a decision that we make every day. Amen. It's a decision. Amen. It really is. Amen. And so I cannot count the amount, the number of people that came up to me when we started working. I can't count them. And said, wow, you read that. I mean, the way you read that, that was like they were saying there was authority in it. Of the devil. There was emphasis in it. He did it like a preacher. So now they call me Al Pastor. Okay? What I'm trying to say is I didn't 
have anything to do with that. He handed that to me and had me read it. I didn't, I didn't ask to read that. I had no preparation for it at all. Because, see, we're supposed to always be prepared. And I knew if Chuck Swindoll wrote it, that it has to be inspired by the Word of God. It has to be inspired and anointed. I knew that. So I knew exactly how to read that, only because the anointing. Because I got anointed reading that to all those people. And it's just, you've got to always be ready. You can't just go to work looking like uh, you just lost your best friend every day. Sometimes we have a problem. You know, sometimes things happen. And it's hard. But you need to get yourself together when you come around people. You need to inspire and just encourage yourself in the Lord, as David said, and get yourself ready because you are going to represent the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't, who are you representing? Gloom and doom and fear? That's not God that you're representing then. Who are you representing? So, see, we, we need to take this seriously, who we are in Jesus, especially nowadays. And this is not even in this. I'm just giving you what God's given me right now because he's given it to me. We have to take this stuff seriously. I don't care who you are. That's right, if you're going to live for Jesus, then you need to act like him. Amen. Amen. And if you can't act like him, at least be striving to. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how you feel. I tell people that all the time. Work. It doesn't matter how you feel. It's what you know. Amen. If you let your emotions get in the way, I've told you this from this pulpit many times, you'd be shooting people on mobile. <laughs> you just would, because your emotions take over and you just act like a, a ding dong or whatever. You just will. You've got to you got to be who who you know to be through the blood. Now we're going to move on from that, okay? Now I'm going to tell you a little story about a gentleman named Tom Roebuck <laughs> and myself, okay? Tom and I grew up in the exact same area, the exact same stomping grounds, and I never knew him. But he knew everybody I knew, and I knew everybody that he knew, so to speak. All my relatives, let's, let me tell you about Tom Roebuck. He played in a band, and I didn't know this, but he played in a band at my cousin's weddings uh, for, um, after her wedding, what do you call it? The uh, reception. reception. I was thinking, in a rehearsal. He played at my cousin's reception. And he was probably about, how old were you? 26. Were you that old? Okay, yeah, because I was probably around 30, 31, something like that. I was home on leave. <coughs> he played in the band, and he was the lead singer. So he had to hand me the microphone because they called me up to sing a song. They would always do. My family would always have me sing. Okay? So he had to have handed me the microphone. I can't believe you can remember me. But anyway, um, that's just giving you one of the times we ran into each other. But he went, when my grandmother passed away in 1993, he rented my grandmother's house. And my uncle was his landlord. Okay? He knew my uncle Ronnie. He knew my Uncle Eddie Tucker. He knew my Uncle Eddie Finn. He knew uh, my cousin Marlene. Her husband Pete and him were very good friends. I mean, he even knew my Uncle Cliff. Um, he knew, unbelievable. We used to go to the same mechanic, Tim Knotts. 15, 18 auto parts. Amazing story, okay? There's no coincidences in God. Did I say that right? None in God. God will put people together. Okay? Now I have an uncle right now sitting in a some kind of a shelter in San Antonio in a really bad part of town. And I'm fixing to go get him out of there. Okay? I wouldn't take my wife down there with me. In fact, I hope my truck is safe. I'm going to clean the blood over. But so Tom and I are going to go. Tom, is, Tom went with me last week. And to, you know, and he already knows everybody I know. And here we, we're sitting there eating at, on the base, eating lunch. And I look over and I see a girl over there. And she's older. I even told Tom, Tom I said, I think that such and such, but she's old. She's old, so I can't get as hard to tell. Like I didn't get older, right? <coughs> 
So anyway, as we were leaving, I said, I've got to go say hello to Cheryl. Remember? Because that was my younger sister's best friend growing up. So I walked over to her, and she looked at me like, who are you? Because it had been about 15 years ago since I saw her. And she went right past me and pointed at Tom and said, I know him. I went, really, Tom, is there anybody you don't know that I know? And apparently he worked with her dad forever, and just the way his, his life and mine have meshed is amazing. Okay? There's other people that, that I know that he knows. Uh, I mean, I could start naming names, you know, like Jeff Ridge and uh, Joey Desso and all these guys that Tom knows and I knew. I was best friends with their older brother. I mean, it's an amazing story. Why am I telling you this? Because Tom went down there with me last Monday and went and visited an uncle and an aunt of mine, which used to be his uh, landlords, and this is my sister. We were able to witness, we spent about five to six hours witnessing him and I, these people, and talking to them about the things of the Lord. And we even talked to Cheryl about the Lord in, in the, uh, the BFs. So what I'm saying to you is, is that God is calling us all right now, but he sets things in motion. When God sets up something, he sets it in motion. He sends you helpers, he sends all of us out. We're not to sit there and be complacent where we're at. You need to get up off of your seat and get out there and get people going because we're in trouble, people. Yeah, we, are. Yeah. we are in trouble. So Tom goes down there with me, and remember, she, uh, and Sister Rachel spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, and that's where we got confirmation of what, so, something that she, uh, Sister Rachel said when she said that he sets us out, sends us out in twos. Okay? He didn't send out husband and wife to certain places. He sent the disciples out together. Okay? Because there's things we're going to have to do. When Tom and I go down to try to get my Uncle Bill out of this one place, it, and he knows him too, it's going to be interesting to see how God does it. I have no idea. But I'm going to wait, and I'm going to go when God says go. You don't go when you want to go. You go when God says go. Okay? But God always, always helps us with all of our decisions. He always shows us. Okay? So let's just start out Isaiah 46, chapter 9. Now, I heard a brother, Bill Winston. Anybody ever heard of Bill Winston? Okay. I heard him mention the scripture, and what God has shown me in this message today is not what he spoke on, but I'm going to use the scripture. Okay? Isaiah 46 and verse 9, starting with verse 9, says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Aren't you glad? Amen. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times of things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. God will show you, so you understand, make this a little elementary. God will show you the end from the beginning. He will show you the end result. Okay? Just what I'm going to say about that right this second. Isaiah 42 and 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. God will always tell you, but if you are not in contact with the Holy Ghost, you'll never know. Amen. You won't. So if you want to sit there and be complacent and just live a normal life and say, praise God on Sunday, go home and read a, a, a couple of verses out of your Bible every day, you're going to stay where you're at. Right. It's about relationship with Him. Because God is going to tell you things what are going to happen before they happen. Amen. Amen. And it's exciting. Yes. It's exciting. Okay. When I went to a, I went to a, uh, a wedding about 15 years ago, okay? Down south, when he went with me, Tom wasn't at this one. He wasn't playing at this one. <laughs> but he knows the people that were there, okay? Anyway, the preacher there that, that married them, Pastor Mark, he, he 
I thought he did an awesome job. It was great to all those, you know, heathens. <laughs> all those, well, the heathens not a bad thing. But anyway, all the people that were there that were not, that don't believe in God. They don't have anything to do with God. But he preached uh, quite a message was enough to move me. And uh, the Lord spoke to me, and I heard him say, I wrote it down because I always get it messed up. If I would let him, he would save my family. Know what he said to me? If I would let him, do you hear that? He would save my family. So he would use me to save my family. So it began. A few weeks ago, I went down there by myself, and Tom went with me last night. And the next few times we go, Tom's going with me unless the Lord says no. But he won't. But he puts it together. I just don't believe he will. Or we won't. But you've got to understand, God has already shown me the end result. Do you hear me? My motivation to go down there is God already said, if you let me, I will save your entire family. So see, he's already shown me the end of this. You're going to be motivated by that. If you're not, what's wrong with you? God will speak to you if you let him and if you're attentive to his word. And if you get in that prayer closet every single day and you commune with God, he will talk to you. And you can ask Wendy, how many times today did I come out and have to write more stuff in this book? How many times? Unbelievable. I've never had to do that before. God kept adding and adding and adding. So what you're hearing today, God wants you to hear. And I'm nothing. All I am is a willing vessel. I will go down there. I will go down there and pull that uncle of mine out of that place. I will with God's anointing. Amen. I will not go if he doesn't go with me. But he showed me the end from the beginning. So as we begin this journey, I already, I already seen the end. I already know what the end's going to be. Just like you do in your Bible. God always warns his people of danger too. Okay? He always does. Genesis 18 and 17 tells us that with Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you excited? Yeah. I'm serious. You should be motivated to get going. All of us. That's right. Get going. Get going. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham the thing which I do? He won't hide anything from you. He'll hide nothing from you if you let him talk to you. If you don't let him talk to you, you'll know nothing. And you'll just be twiddling your thumbs here come the disaster after disaster after disaster. There are people twiddling their thumbs that are Christians right now, running out to get that vaccination. They can, okay, I'll get the vaccine. I'm going to be okay. Well, why don't you ask God about that? I'm not telling you not to get a vaccination. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what are you doing? Why are you not relying on God? Why are you living in fear? That's right. You know you're in fear when you're in fear. If you don't, then you're fooling yourself. God will always tell us, because he's omnipotent. He's omnipotent. He is not restricted by time. He's not restricted by it. That's why he's already seen everything. Because there's no time involved. He already knows, Tom, huh, what's going to happen. He already knows. He's not restricted by time. He's able to do anything. Okay, so now here we are in these last days. We're in the last days. Are we not? Okay. Jesus did what? He warned us of everything. He warned us of everything that was to come. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2. I write a bunch of scriptures down, then I rely on the Lord to tell me what to say. You do too. What we do? 2 Peter chapter 2. Let's just start with Second Peter chapter two. 
Simon Peter, the first verse. Uh, yeah, first verse. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained life, precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Okay. That's where our peace comes from. Knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, you have nothing. Amen. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They're destroyed. Okay? You're never, ever going to be able to do anything without making sure that you have the knowledge of what in the world this, this book is saying, okay? you got to be extremely understanding of that. There is so many false teachings now out there, okay? There's false teachings everywhere. I met this woman in Rapid City, South Dakota years ago. And she told me that her, that God was a woman. I said, really? How do you know that? That's what you do. You ask me where they got it from. How do you know it? And she goes, well, that's what my mom and dad taught me. I said, okay, so what does the Bible say? And she, you know, so I got into the Bible with her, with her and explained some things. But <clears throat> she believed that God was a woman because of the teachings that her parents and her had received. This was in South, she was from South America. She was older than me, this lady, I think. And so she's been doing this her whole life, okay? So I explained to her that what she was believing was only in her mind. I said, so you're relying on your mind. See, I rely on this right here. Amen. This is the knowledge of God right here. I rely on this. If it's not in here, I don't believe it, Amen. okay? If it isn't here, then I'm going to believe it. Okay? But it don't say anywhere in there about God being a woman. Oh, Steve, nowhere. Nowhere. So I said, so your mind is telling you that. So you're going on what your mind says. And she kept thinking about that. And finally, at the end of our conversation, she told me, she said, you just destroyed everything I believed in my whole life. And I said, good. Good. Because now you can recover from it. Okay? But this is what we're going to deal with right now, people. This is things you're going to deal with. You're going to have to believe with, or, or you're going to have to deal with this, the, these, these weird uh, uh, teachings that are going on right now. You're going to have to deal with it. You can't let people believe a lie. So you're going to have to be bold. You're going to have to sit there in your seat like I do and tell the guy next to me that doesn't believe in God that, you know what, I'm here for you anyway. I am here because... God wants me sitting next to you. I tell him that. I believe that. Amen. Otherwise, I couldn't say it with confidence. But I believe I sit where I sit because of people that sit next to me. The one guy on the other side of me, that guy would do anything for me. He's a young guy, and he helps me. I tell Wendy all the time. He helps me when I get behind because he gets really crazy there. He will jump up and stop his work to help me. Because, see, God is helping me. And he will use people to help me. But you've got to understand, people, we are responsible. We are so responsible. Hallelujah. Now, God is warning his people. I pulled a few here that I want to read to you, okay? About how God is right now. Let's go to Zechariah. Uh, yeah, Zechariah chapter 14. God told me to tell you this stuff. So what I'm telling you right here, listen, because it is important. Okay? It's super important. But we are in an era right now. Right now we're in an era that things are falling apart all around us. Okay? And the Bible speaks of a time in Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12. It talks in here about about a plague that God's going to send on the earth. And it talks about where the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. That is exactly what a neutron bomb will do. 
it will melt your eyes, your tongue, everything. A neutron bomb will do that. But back then, the people were going, what does that mean? What is that all about? See, what I'm saying is, this Bible right here is already warning you about what times are coming. Amen. But people are not paying attention. That's right. And God wants you to know, pay attention. Because right. he has the answer. He has Amen. the end from the beginning and he declares it. Amen. Okay? That's where the first part, that's the first time you hear about the use of nuclear weapons in the Bible, actually. Then you've got in Luke chapter 21, it talks about the weather, waves roaring, fear, winds blowing, the whole thing with your hurricanes and everything's on the rise right now. Everything, earthquakes are on the rise. I mean, it's just amazing what is going on right now, but you're not hearing so much. All you keep hearing about is, Sister Rachel, climate change. the love of money. It's not money being evil, it's the love of the money. That's right. What is going on right now with, with, with this? Oh, I don't get started on that. Lord, Lord help me here. I want to make sure I stay in the anointing. Right? <laughs> and when the anointing leaves, I might as well leave. Amen. Okay. So, what's happening right now is they're teaching all these different things. They're trying to change all the history. They're trying to tell you that the earth is billions and billions and billions of years old. I will not believe that. Because the Bible does not say that. It doesn't say it. There's no such thing as this, uh, what they call it between chapter or verse 1 and verse 2. The, um, oh, what's the word? I can't remember. But anyway, there is a gap, the gap theory. There's a gap theory. But there's no proof of anything like that. Nowhere. It just said, they take verse 1 and 2 in Genesis and, set, and, they, and they make up all this time. Because you've got to understand some evolution needs time. Yep. They have to have time in evolution. Yep. Because if they're going to turn a monkey into a man, it's going to take billions of years. Because there's no missing link. There's none of that. Nothing. So they need time, and that's why they do that. That's why, and, and I, I got a lot of this from Dr. Hogan. I don't know if you guys know who he is. Anyway, that's where I got a lot of this information, which is really good. But they, uh, there's so much, so much proof of the flood. They're saying the flood never happened. Oh, my gosh. They have fossil proof. The Grand Canyon was, it took millions and millions of years to create the Grand Canyon when um, it happened. In, the way I see it, it happened during the flood. And all of the water that went through there, and it did it, what, in, in a year or less than a year. And it carved that out, and then it went into the, it, it all spilled out into the Gulf of Mexico. This is, you ought to, you ought to see some of Dr. Hogan's stuff. It's really good. Because if you go into the Gulf of Mexico and you dig down, you dig down 100 feet, you're going to find trees under there, and they're sideways. They're, they're sideways underground. They dig them up and they've dug them up and pulled them up with all these trees and they're not even from that era because they're all spilled into the Gulf of Mexico. That had to have happened from a flood. They have proof of that. So we know there was a great flood because we know the Bible's true. We know there's nothing in the Bible that's not true. Well, all the reason I'm giving you this stuff today and different examples is because you're going to have to deal with it, people. You're going to have to deal with it because if you don't, it's going to hurt your faith. If you start going with what they're saying, it's going to hurt your faith. It really will. It, you need to find the proof yourself in this word. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with getting assistance. Just make sure that the assistance is coming from the word and not from an opinion. Amen. Scientific facts are good. Scientific facts actually back up the Bible. Yes, they do. God created science. Wars and rumors of wars. Here we are. Jesus predicted it. This is going to happen. He said this is going to happen. He's warning you right here. This will happen. Yes. And we have wars and rumors of wars, right? Yes. See, this message has to be preached right now because we're living in it. It's happening right on our news. If you turn the news on, I wouldn't advise you to even watch the news. I really wouldn't. I mean, I, I look at the headlines periodically just to see what's going on. Just like apparently Kabul fell last night. 
Okay, so Afghanistan is taken over by the Taliban again. So we got thugs ruling all that. People, it is bad. It is really bad. Then if this scares you, then get in your word. It shouldn't scare you. It shouldn't scare you. In fact, you should almost rejoice saying, well, Jesus said this is going to happen. That just proves my Bible to be true. In Luke 17, it says the earth would be filled with violence. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Can you look at the, oh, my gosh. You know what's going on in Portland, Oregon right now in Seattle? It's a war zone. You can't even go outside. It is so bad. Chicago? Oh, my gosh. And it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not on our doorstep yet. Oh, yeah. But how soon till it will be? Because the earth is going to mourn as it's doing right now. Every five years, we double what we know. Every five years. Some people say every two years. Daniel 12 and 4 says knowledge shall increase. Deadly diseases, Matthew 24 and 7. This is the big one right here with deadly diseases. This is a big one. Because you know the coronavirus that we're all dealing with right now. Okay? So, this is how the mark of the beast, I believe, is going to infiltrate this world. It's already started. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? Yes. When a government is saying to you that you will take this vaccination or you're not going to work here, and you can't go to a basketball game okay. unless you can show your card. Okay. People, it, wake up, wake up. Amen. Because I'm telling you right now, this is the seduction of us. Amen. They're seducing you into believing that the government has the answer. Mm -hmm. And as soon as all of a sudden they're going to come over and they're going to say, you're not going to be able to buy or sell anything yep. unless you take this mark. We don't know exactly what the mark's going to be. Not exactly. So many things are symbolic. You know what I'm saying? But beware. That's right. Beware. Amen. Computer chip, you're probably right. Yep. But beware. Because the seduction has begun. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I couldn't I, I just can't believe it when 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 I'm being told like like my son, he's an air traffic controller in Houston. And he works for Homeland Security. Wendy works for Homeland Security indirectly. My other son works for TSA. Okay? If the government decides that the feds will take this, this vaccination, guess what? The ones I just mentioned, they're not going to take it. They're going to lose their jobs. If you start giving in and start doing what they're demanding you to do, How easy is it going to be, Pastor Mark, for these for Christians to take the mark? That's right. You can't get into it. That's if you want to get a vaccination, like I said, I'm not going to give you my opinion on that, but I think you probably already know what it is. I'm going to trust the Lord Jesus Christ to protect me. That's right. Amen. I'm going to trust Amen. him, Amen. and I'm going to make sure I do everything I can with my nutrition, because Jesus made the nutrition for it. Told us what to eat. Because that will protect your body. Okay, Amen. come on. You have an immune system that God gave you That's that right. will fight for you. Amen. You have a little self, a little uh, control center right here in front of your heart called the thymus. I believe it's called the thymus. It's, it's what protects your, your body. It's where the um, immune system is headquartered. Right here is where it's located. And if you're not feeding that thymus, it doesn't send out these T-cells. It sends out these T cells to your whole body, so when something invades it, guess what? It kills it right on the spot. Now, that is a God that cares about you. Amen. That is a God that takes care of your body. But if you're not taking care of your body with nutrition, you're eating gluten and you're eating all this junk because it tastes good, guess what? You may have to suffer. You may have to get a disease. You may have to pray, Jesus, please heal me, even though you're already healed. But you may have to do that because you're not taking care of your body. And that is a sin in itself. Get quiet. Amen. It's hard, I guess. So 
I think we all know what we must be doing in order to make it through this crisis. Okay? Pestilences are going to be here. Jesus spoke about it. He warned you. He told you. And here it is suddenly upon you. Did we ever believe we'd be where we are? 10 or 15 years ago, I could not believe that we would be where we are right now. I would never have thought it. But it happened like overnight. Doesn't it seem like it was overnight? Here it is. And, and you can't believe anything that people say. You can't believe the politicians. You can't believe anything they say. Nothing they say, I would believe. No way. But the devil had to lie, cheat, and steal to get his way. But you know what? We are God's answer down here. Amen. We're not the answer, but we have the answer. And if we're not telling each other about it, that's what I'm saying. That you represent somebody where you go. We've got to remember that. So when somebody cuts you off in traffic, <laughs> do your best to say, Lord, bless him. Amen. Maybe he has a, a child that just that, that is sick and dying in the car with him. We don't know what's going on. We do not know. We really don't. We really don't. It's kind of like you know, um, in our in a, our where I live, they have this. It's kind of like Facebook, but it's a website for all the neighborhood. It talks about all the neighbors, the HOA thing. And when I'm saying, I was walking by a couple the other day, and they wouldn't even look at me. I said, Good morning, too. They wouldn't look at me. I can't stand this. How come people are like that around here? I'm from the north, and we were always real friendly. You guys are all. And I'm like, Get over yourself. You don't know what just happened. Though that couple may have been in a fight, they may be divorcing. People, we don't know what people are going through. That's right. We want everybody to be like us. Not everybody's going to be like us, mm. Bubba. Not everybody's going to be like us. Praise God, they're not. But we can't be getting upset with people just because they don't say hi to you. Oh my gosh, something's going on. Pray for them. Pray for them. Bible says there's going to be signs in the skies. Jerusalem is going to become a cup of trembling. Or is it not? Why would any city like Jerusalem be so popular when it don't have an industry? It has nothing. Jerusalem has nothing. But it's got God's return. It's got that. But it has nothing for a, a normal person's uh, you know, affections. Really, it doesn't. But they're fighting over that city. Because the devil wants it destroyed, because the devil don't want Jesus' return. That's what this is all about. It's great. My dad even told me one time, he said, you know, that's interesting. Yeah. You're talking about that. He said, so when I was a little boy, they were fighting over uh, Israel and Jerusalem. was always in the news. And always will be. And it's become a cup of trembling. Blasphemy of God. There's nothing to GD and JC, and it goes on all the time. And I had somebody apologize to me not too long ago, and I look at them and I say, apologize to God about that. Let me explain to you what you're doing, okay? The best way to look at somebody when they blaspheme the name is to look at them and say, you know, you just use God's name in such a disrespectful way, okay? God is the creator of the universe creator of everything. Okay? And you have just dishonored his name. You have disrespected him because of your attitude. If you're crying out, oh God, oh God, no, that's different. But you're disrespecting God when you use his name in vain like that. Amen. And that is exactly why it was one of the Ten Commandments. People don't know that. They look at me and go, oh, See, you've got to be bold enough to talk to people. I'm telling you, people, we're not bold enough. We have got to get bold. We have got to get going. We've got to stop using excuses like, well, I don't think they'd like me to say it. Just say it. Just say it. I was speaking to a guy one time in Guam out in the hallway. I was in the military, and I was telling him about God come back to church and had a chief master sergeant who outranked me come out in the, in, the, in the hallway and say, you guys need to stop that. He said, you, there's a time and a place for that. And I turned right, came right out of my mouth before I even could even grab it. And I said, yes, and the time and place is now. And he said not one word to me. He turned, it was supernatural. He turned around and walked right back in his office. And I thought I, that there would be some kind of uh, repercussions. 
never was. When God ordains you to talk to somebody, talk to them and stop being in fear. Amen. Because God is going to warn us, he's going to tell us, and that's how we're going to live our lives the rest of this time that we have left. I'm almost done. Let's go to uh, Isaiah chapter 48 again in verse 3. See, I don't give her all the verses because I have like 10 scriptures I didn't even use. I don't know what I'm going to use. I, I rely on God to do that. So anyway, so we're at Isaiah 48, 3 and 10. It says, I have declared the former things pretty similar. From the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them, I did them suddenly, and I don't have done them, and my raven image and my molten image have commanded them. See, you're not going to say somebody else did that's why he tells you ahead of time. You're not going to say, well, I pray to whoever. But God is going to show us. He's such a such an awesome God. He's such a wonderful, 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 caring God. Lord, he, he loves you so much. He loves you so much. Jesus loves us so much. I mean, I, I, we don't even, we can't even fathom how much he loves us. We can't even fathom that. Our relationship with him, he gives us answers. He doesn't scold you. He doesn't get in there and start yelling at you. He, he will at your attitude. But if you go into him humble and come boldly before the throne of grace, to receive mercy. Because he's all ready to give it to you. Because Jesus was tempted in every way you've been tempted. Every way possible that you've been tempted, so was Jesus. But he did it without sin. Amen. So that's why you can go boldly before the throne and receive that mercy. Amen. Okay, I'm, I want to go to Matthew chapter 16. I'm not losing you, am I? No? Okay. One, one no. The rest are... <laughs> Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Kim, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 21. Okay. From that time forth, Jesus, or uh, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things to the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Now see, if you concentrate on the beginning of all of that, you're going to be discouraged. But he's going to be raised at the end. So that's how you have to see that. See, what we should do and what the disciples should have done, I don't know, maybe they did, maybe some of the would say that. But they should have looked and said, okay. And understood, Jesus tried to explain it to them. On the third day, he's going to be raised again. He's coming back. See, this is how we all get in trouble here because we're going on a journey. We're on, did did y'all know you're on a journey? You're on a journey. Yes. Yes, we are. And but the greatest part about it is we already know the end because he declared it from the beginning. That's right. So when it begins, all this begins. This journey. We need to not look at the journey, so to speak, but look at the end of what God said. Lord God said he's going to save you, Brother Bobby. He's going to save you. It doesn't, what you're going through right now in life, if you've had some devastating things happen, you need to look at the end result because you're going to see the babies again. You're going to see them again. Amen. You're going to see Jesus again. Amen. That's how you make it through. That's how you make it through the beginning. Amen. Okay? Amen. Because he declared it. He, he declared it from the beginning. The end from the beginning. You get it? You get it? Amen. This is how you inspire yourself and encourage Amen. yourself. Amen. Is what's the end of this? What's the end result of this, Lord? Well, what did you say? Because you're on a journey. Jesus said in Luke chapter 8, I'm almost done. I said that before. 
But if this is stuff God wants me to show you. And I know a lot of you know it, but that's okay. It's good to go to a review here because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. By the word of God. By the word of God, not the word of Tom, Al, Pastor Mark, but by the word of God. That's where your faith comes. Okay, so we're going to Luke, chapter 8, verse 22. I made it extremely difficult on poor Kim, and I'm sorry. Because she just, so she scampers and has to find this. So, anyway, starting with verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let's go over unto the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. He said, go to the other side. He didn't say, let's go across the lake, get in a, get in a, in a, in a big storm, and all will perish. He said, let's go to the other side of the lake. That's what the Lord tells you right now. Let's keep going here. We're on a journey. You know what the end's going to be? You're not going to die. If you're looking at death, you're going to die. You're looking at living, you're looking at helping, you're looking at saving other people and getting people where you, where you're going. See, it's kind of like when you, when you get married to a woman. That woman better know where you're going. Because God made a woman rely on security. If the man doesn't know where he's going, why would she want to go with you? Seriously. When I met Wendy, I was deep into it. I was in such a relationship with the Lord. It was amazing. It was right after the revival, during the revival. But see, I knew where I was going, and she wanted to know. But if you don't know where you're going, don't be looking for no woman. Because why would she want to go with you when you don't know where you're going? True? Amen. Because we're lost when we don't know where we're going. And we go, we go through that sometimes. Lord, what's going on here? So make sure you know where you're going, especially if you're seeking out a wife. Okay. Anyway. And so, with that story about Jesus saying, go, let's go to the other side of the lake, Wendy. It says, go to the other side of the lake. Then we go to the other side of the lake. And you look at declaring the end from the beginning. The beginning of it is when you're going and you hit a storm. You should be looking at what he said, go to the other side of the lake, so we're going to get there. So now that's what we should be doing in life, Brother Bobby. That's what we should be doing. We should be looking at the end of it, not the journey. I can't emphasize that enough. That's what the Lord kept telling me. Stop looking at the temporal. Stop looking at the temporal. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. I look at the eternal. Because the temple, you're going to see it. Oh my gosh, you go to work, I just got fired. Okay, well, God has better jobs anyway. Amen. That's how we have to look at it. God's got something for us. God's going to take care of your children. Because he said he would. Right, right. Acts chapter 16, he talks about that. Be saved, dear jailer. And you're saved in your whole household. Well, God, you saved my whole household. I got one that's running them up right now. Now, what about him or her? Well, look at the end. Don't look at the beginning. So as you go through it, just love them through. Love them through. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I think I'm done. I left out a whole bunch of stuff. Did you say thank God? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a whole bunch. I had a whole bunch I didn't do. But I... I just gave you what the Lord told me to give you. But we need to really, really embed that in our brains. He declares the end from the beginning. He always warns us. He always tells us. Go into the book of Revelations and read how glorious heaven's going to be. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you won't be scared to death anymore. You don't want to go. Amen. Okay? It's going to be a wonderful place. That's our ending. Amen. That's our ending. It's going to be tough in this world. But you know what? I'm going to make sure that I remember every time that I'm starting to go through something. Jesus said, go to the other side. Don't worry about that storm in the middle of it. Get through it by praising him, 
by praising him through it, as Sister Nikki said, by praising him through it. And praise him for the end. Right. Yes. You don't praise him because you just lost a loved one. Praise God that he died. No, that's not what he's talking about. Praise God for his life or her life. But praise God, you'll see him again. Amen. That's a promise from Amen. God. God doesn't break promises. We do. That's right. So get on it. Know where you're going so other people around you will know where you're going. Be that representative for him. And enjoy the journey. Don't have a long face. Enjoy the journey because you're declaring the end from the beginning. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. You know, I do want to mention this because, you know, Brother Al was talking about how this vaccination is ushering in the mark of the beast. Just this morning I was reading they're having an event in Louisiana somewhere. It's a worldwide event. And the only way you're going to be allowed into this event is either you got to show your vaccination card. And this is like into the event, into the, any of the restaurants, anything. And not only that, <clears throat> but either you got to show that or you got to show a negative COVID test that's less than 48 hours old. That, I just read that this morning. That's an event coming up. So they are quickly very, very quickly ushering in the mark of the beast. And, you know, don't kid yourself. You, you know, we thought, you know, younger, younger ages, we thought that it'd be very noticeable. But remember what Genesis says about the, the serpent. He is very subtle. Very sneaky, in other words. Very sneaky. He's going to sneak it in and people... Christian people aren't even going to think twice about it. Amen. So that's why the Bible says we must not be deceived. Amen. We must not be deceived. Amen. Stand with me. Pray the Lord. I'm not trying to rehash the message. I'm just giving you information. Praise the Lord. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Lord God, we thank you so much. We thank you for your word today, Father God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that's been in this place. Lord God, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for touching and ministering to the lives and hearts of your people today, Father God. Lord, we just bless and honor your holy name, Father God. Lord, we just ask your blessings upon each and every individual today, Father God, as they leave from this place, Father. Lord, just minister to them. And Lord, help them be a light unto others through their lives the rest of this week, Father God. And we just bless you and praise you and honor you, Jesus. In Jesus' holy name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Lord, we're going to see you Wednesday night.